guys, Jimmy here, and today I'm going to be teaching you a little bit about wireless redstone. So I thought we'd start off today with a demonstration um, of how this works. So there we go. That's one lamp on, and the second lamp on, and the third lamp on. Now, they aren't connected whatsoever um, by physical wires. Now, it doesn't matter how far apart you put them, I'm just putting them this close because I can. Um, and I can still demonstrate you can fly straight between them, no redstone. As you can see, the buttons are connected to absolutely nothing other than um, these command blocks. And if you think, he's done something in texture pack, no, I can fly through it. There's no blocks there. It's all good. Um, so this has been around for quite a while, actually, now. Um, and I've been meaning to do a video on it for quite a long time. But I'm finally now getting around to it, so let's go. Now, you've seen the... You've just seen the demonstration. Um, now, let's start off. First thing to do is um, when you click a command block normally in the chat it will tell you what's going going on and what's happening um, and to toggle this on and off you do game or command block output output false and that will turn it off and this one will turn it on so we're going to turn this on so we can see what um, as you can see it's done it there what we're actually pressing and um, what the game's doing because it's really helpful for testing purposes and when you're explaining and displaying stuff <coughs> So, first off, all of this runs around the new, or new-ish, or quite old actually, uh, scoreboard function. Now, I think this came in 1.4 or 1.5, I can't remember which. Um, so it's been out for quite a long time actually. Um, now, how this works is first off, you need to add a scoreboard. And then by adding, and adding scores and testing for those scores, you can create wireless redstone. Now, in this instance, I'm going to be adding a new scoreboard. So let's go through this. So it says scoreboard objectives. Now this is basically telling the game that I'm making a scoreboard under the category objectives. And the next add, which I'm adding it, I'm going to call it test. Now dummy test afterwards, dummy is the type of scoreboard. Now there's multiple types of scoreboards that count different things. Now all of them can be affected by commands, but things like kill count can, only, can also be affected by how you, much you kill someone. So in this case, you will only want dummy because, for example, if I was to kill um, my g my friend over here, who's not actually here, I don't have an imaginary friend, but if I was to kill some guy um, and I had a kill count instead of a dummy, then I could actually risk messing up my redstone because I'm sending signals. Um, so you don't want that, so we're going to use a dummy type. Now that can only be influenced by commands, and then test, and test the display name. So I'll just click done, or click enter, and that's the scoreboard. Now I'm just going to click add, and you said added new objective test successfully. So we know it's all go, all working well. Now the next step is optional, and I would highly advise it for, if not always, but for at least your testing. Now when you're using wireless redstone, you don't want it always coming up telling you what's going on. You just like buttons being pressed and uh, you actually seeing results. So um, probably take this off before you um, post your contraption or finish your contraption but while you're making it it's so so useful now what this actually does is it displays the scores and the values for your scoreboard for all the players now if I look in the first one there's three types of display there is sidebar which is this one which will add a little bar on your right hand side there is list which will display your score in the player list um, and if you're on single player and you don't think you know you can't do player list, um, when you do this on single player, your player list will be available um, for checking out that. And the final one is below name. Now this comes down below the little name that floats above your head on multiplayer. So I'm going to turn on list. And did I add? I don't think I added sidebar. Ah, there we go. Now I've got a d score of zero. Lovely. So the next three is we have set, add, and subtract. Um, we also have two more reset and I can't remember the other one. Um, and what this does, or what these three are the most useful and pretty much the only useful ones, um, is how we are going to manipulate our score. Now for set, we're going to set it to a, a value, your specified value, and this looks like this. So score for players set at A. Now at A will set it to all players. Now you want this to be all players. The reason for this is because um, if it's not all players, for example, if some guy was to click this 
and it's set to the closest player to um, one and then your test for command it tested for the closest player it may not be the same player so you want all players to make sure it will always work um, so it's set players all players of the in the test category to one so this will set my score to one pretty much now it's exactly the same with add and remove there you go that's add you just change set to add and re remove you just change remove or set or add to remove that didn't make much sense and you just click them and you're all good now the final thing is the test for command and this is how you suck out the um, values for your scoreboard now if we look in here we can see we're using the test for command and we're using at a again that's all players now as you can see the square brackets are right next to that at a without any spaces and that basically means at a that follows this comp this um, specified um, stuff really so it says test for all players and who fulfill both score test one now this comes as the maximum point so it tests for all players with a maximum score in test of one and then it says also with the comma score test minimum one so it's now testing for all the players for all, it's testing all players for a score of uh, the maximum score of one and the minimum score of one in the test category which we've made now as you can see my score is conveniently one now if I now click this and update and run this command um, which is happens to be true now when it's true it will give you a one block signal strength out of a comparator so if I run this now there we go comparator turns on now comparator will now stay on the comparator will stay on um, until the command is run again and the value is not as selected so if I was now to change my value down to zero again it will stay on until I run the test for command again and when it realizes in fact no I'm not one then it will turn it off and there you go now the best way to do this is as seen over here in a lovely little clock and this is just running redstone on top of them and it will power all of these continually uh, pretty much forever well forever what am I talking about uh, it will just keep on flashing them on um, continually checking um, for any updates that will happen that's way we can get it and the faster the redstone clock the faster it will test now if we then go back over here you can see there's one last command block now this command block really only applies if you want a button sort of output now this will set my score to example that's the scoreboard I'm using in this example to zero now over here we're setting them to one or th one two or three here we're testing for one two three and then we're setting it all back to zero so that it will reset after the button push has finished so for example I press the button now it will turn off now that is for button inputs if you don't want a button input don't put it there it's pretty self-explanatory um, and is really easy after testing it's much much less complicated than you'll think um, and there's only really three commands you need to know um, so that's about it now I just do want to mention a word for servers now servers is where it gets slightly complicated first off for vanilla servers and for all servers in fact you have to have command blocks enabled in your server.properties um, text file um, if you do not have that command blocks you're just wasting your time um, and if you're not the owner just contact the owner contact an admin to contact the owner just get your word out there you want to use command blocks um, now the second thing <coughs> is for you bucket users um, and all you lovely plugin fans um, if you're using plugins quite a few plugins can actually block command blocks stuff like world guard and things like that um, and you will have to enable them in the config file once again if you're not the owner speak to him speak to the admins or her um, and basically you need to have that enabled or once again you're wasting your time um, now the last thing I'm gonna really pretty much say is in bucket when you when you're using craft bucket if you use the pick block tool to get your command blocks just like this it can and you place it down and it disappears and the block disappears and it comes out of your inventory don't worry all you need to do is you want to use the give command or the slash I or something like that to give yourself the command block because you are 
if you pick block on bucket it can glitch out there's a bug where it will disappear and that's pretty much it so if you have any cool inventions um, come on send me a message and I'll have a look at them um, I want to if you are playing on my server you do have command blocks enabled we've got them all enabled yay um, and if you have any questions look in the description below I will have all the syntax in there um, for all of these lovely commands um, I'll also have a word document that I've been working on um, with quite a lot of command block info um, but I've been told a short time ago actually um, that other people like Seth Bling have already done this um, but if you want to get my word file it will be in the description um, other than that thank you all for watching and goodbye I'll see you next time